You redneck cousin f***ing classless pieces of I hope you understand what you just did. You rig out the vote! I hope that cop beats you so good. Guys, I've never seen a meltdown this bad. I'm Brad Palumbo, and we're going to cover TikTok's insane, unhinged, and unreal meltdown over Trump's massive election victory. We're going to take a look at LGBT TikTok, black TikTok, just unhinged TikTok in general, and so many other videos that are going absolutely viral that just show how insane and out of touch some people are and how they just can't handle this development whatsoever. I've truly never seen anything like it. The meltdowns are insane and unprecedented. Let's take a look at the first batch of people just simply melting down. You redneck cousin f***ing classless pieces of I hope you understand oh. what you just did. You don't because you're really f***ing stupid. But I hope at some point you have to reckon with it on a personal level at least a little bit because you f***ing mouth breathers. You absolute worthless f who like to thump your Bibles and talk about the absence of family and God in the modern day, yet you decided to elect a sexual predator for president who is currently being puppeteered by a deadbeat father who also happens to be the wealthiest man on earth who effectively wants to plant a chip in your brain that turns you into a computer. How's that for an absence of God for you, you stupid f***ing sacks of horse manure? God f***ing hates you, and by the time a lot of you get that through your thick Schools, it's gonna be far too late. Uh, um, he seems stable. <laughs> Lefties haven't realized that insulting Americans isn't going to work. Like, you're not gonna bully people into supporting your agenda or your side or call them enough names to make them stop voting for Trump. If they haven't realized that by now, they never will. But some people melted down in ways that were more internal and less rooted in lashing out like these people. Guys, we literally don't even have to panic. We literally don't even have to freak out right now. We don't even have to, f like, we don't have to freak out. We don't have to freak out because it's not even real. Because, bitch, freak out the vote. Oh, it is funny. The, I've already seen a fair amount of election denialism on TikTok, which is so ironic because of how rightfully they criticized Trump for pulling that crap in 2020. I even saw one lady talking about how she doesn't believe the election results because the like horoscopes or what is it astrology signs suggested that Trump wouldn't win this easily so it can't be real and lastly the astrology of it all so many astrologers so many spiritualists have stated and myself included that intuitively it didn't feel like Trump was winning and I'm like y'all come on now Put down the crack pipe. Now, the one sub community of TikTok that seems to be coping the worst is LGBT TikTok, where gays and lesbians and transgender creators are losing their minds for no real reason, of course, but they're still gifting us with some of the most unhinged content from the entire internet in response to Trump's victory. Here's one lesbian woman advertising that she's now seeking to flee the country. Hi, I am a young, beautiful American woman. And a very humble one. If you have a passport with any of the following countries, Canada, the UK, Ireland, France, Germany, Norway, Denmark, Sweden, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Taiwan, Spain, Portugal, Greece, the Netherlands, Austria, Czech Republic, Brazil, Mexico, Iceland, Belgium, Argentina, South Africa, or the Philippines, or basically anywhere that I won't get shot on sight for being a lesbian, do you want to get married? I need someone that has a non-American passport that wants to get married uh hopefully between now and january sorry if this is coming off kind of weird i'm in a really bad dissociative haze right now and yeah. i have a feeling that we're all gonna have to flee the country benefits of marrying me besides the fact that i get a green card like i said before i am beautiful i'm an amazing <laughs> cook i'm extremely funny when i'm not in a dissociative haze over the fall of the american empire i mean like i wanted the fall of the american empire but not like this this isn't what i wanted um beautiful can cook well read i'm a voracious reader actually and i can carry a tune if you want me to dance on the piano while you play piano i can dance in a very vaudevillian manner i'm also great with dogs i could probably learn how to change a diaper and i can garden when i don't have nails on thank you so much this was my um audition to be your future wife in a country that is not america and that's it <laughs> i'm honestly torn between feeling bad for these people because like of how delulu they are and just 
how much fake false news and propaganda they seem to have absorbed through their thick skulls. But then the other part of me is then like, no, you know what? Get the f*** out. Seriously, get the f*** out of this country. If you hate it so much here, if you – let's de- get you out and get somebody else in who loves this country and isn't going to crap on it and want to flee just because their side loses an election, which is just part of how this works, okay? You don't always get what you want. And you're not supposed to throw your toys like a toddler and hate the country just because you lose for once. And what is she talking about? Gay people are going to be shot now in America because Trump won. Did I miss that part of his first term? I mean, he's literally pro-gay, pro-lesbian. He like he supports gay marriage. Like, there's so many things you can say about him, but they are stuck on this shit that's just not real. It's just not true. They like made it up in their head, and now you want to flee the country and go to some random place, and your only qualification is that I won't get shot. Like, touch grass. It's giving unhinged. But I'm actually fully supportive of this lady's plan. Seriously, get out. Go. Reach out to me. I will pay your airfare on the one condition that you sign a contract that in exchange for the money, you will not come back. Up next, we have a trans TikToker who is warning the dolls, which refers to trans women, that they're all going to have to flee the country. I'm so serious, dolls. Like, what is the move? Where are we moving? Where is the doll link up happening? You know, where is DollCon Transylvania going to concur? Um, are we flooding Canada? Are we like y'all keep saying Europe? What part of Europe? Where are we going? Do we want to like try to take over Greece? Do we want to, you know, I don't know, maybe go to some random island, build a civilization? Like, where do we go? Yeah, I'm gonna have to start eating receipt paper. So at least this one was funny. Like, she did crack me up a couple times. But again, y'all do not need to flee the country. Nothing bad is gonna happen to you. Get a grip. I mean, did I just miss the part from 2016 to 2020 where all the transgender people were rounded up and put into camps like that? The math is not mathing. You're hallucinating. Obviously, Trump and Republicans are anti-trans on some issues like they oppose the trans movement's position on biological males and women's sports they oppose the trans movement's position on giving kids sex changes and you know what maybe in some places they might go too far and start restricting the rights and freedoms of trans adults in which case we can push back on them you can sue them in the courts we can speak out against it but nobody is going to be killing like there's just this level of hysteria about it that It's just totally untethered from reality and is so disqualifying to me. Like all jokes aside, if you hate it so much, don't let the door hit you. But there's really something toxic about scaring people. You read the comments of this video. It's littered with trans people who are genuinely fearful for their lives, unnecessarily so. And that is tragic. It's actually bad and evil and wrong to scare people baselessly and put them into this state of paranoia and fear. It's bad for them and it's bad for our society. So you're just so toxic and so deranged and you need to give it a rest or just get the heck out at this point meanwhile this gay guy is threatening to out gay trump supporters who are closeted oh and if you are a straight man who is on grinder with a wife and you voted for donald duck i would suggest you delete that at very quickly because i will be exposing every single one of you because if donald duck is gonna do something to my gay ass he's gonna do something to yours too don't think just because you're too scared to admit you're one of us that you're safe Hmm. so there's a lot here first why are you hooking up with married men in the first place that's crusty and degenerate and honestly i don't support exposing closeted people but if they're cheating on their wives i mean that's a different story i'm not against exposing them it has nothing to do with who they voted for and again though the delulu is off the charts trump is not anti-gay he's not gonna do anything to your gay ass outside of maybe your wet dreams (laughs) so there's just no need for your revenge tour or your rage towards these gay people who voted Republican. And also, they're entitled to do that. They're Americans with the right to vote the way they see fit. And they may well have different opinions than you on everything from the border to inflation to foreign policy to abortion because they're individuals, not members of some homogenous hive mind that is obligated to vote a certain way or they're traitors who must be exposed and attacked. That's actually giving cult. 
my dear, you need to touch grass and stop hooking up with married men, you crusty. Now we got to move on to a, another genre of TikTok outrage over the election and Trump's big victory that's targeted towards racial minorities who dared vote Republican, which they did in higher numbers than expected. They're getting some of the most insane hate I've ever seen on TikTok, including from woke people hoping they get brutalized by police brutality. You can't make this shit up. If you're a black man and you voted for Trump, I hope that cop beats you so good. Oh, I really, really do. I really, really do. I'm wishing it on you. Love you. Not really. Make sure your own boy recorded and send it to me. I will post it and laugh. She seems normal and well-adjusted. <coughs> Y'all, never have I in my life wished for someone else to be the victim of police brutality. Like, that's not something a well-adjusted happy, normal person thinks, even about people who disagree with them. She wasn't the only one. This was like a little trend where black TikTok, or at least some black TikTokers were getting on the internet and saying with their full chest that if you're a black person who voted for Trump, they hope you get George Floyded. And one last thing, and I don't care if y'all hate me for saying this, but if you're a black man or a black woman and you voted for Trump and Lord forbid, Trump actually ends up winning, God forbid it, God forbid it and he actually ends up winning. If you experience any type of police brutality from this day forward, it doesn't matter. Don't don't come to us with it. Don't ask us to share the story. Don't ask us to put money on the GoFundMe. Don't ask us to like, share, repo. Don't ask us to do anything. This is what you wanted. This is the life you wanted. This is the story you wanted. This is what you wanted. This is what you wanted. And actually, you should probably go back and thank those police because with full immunity from Trump, they could have just right there, but they let you walk away. So maybe you should thank them, but definitely don't come to us. This is so wild. I just can't put myself in the headspace of somebody who wishes brutal violence on somebody because they disagree with you. Like, God forbid, Black men have different opinions on various complicated policy issues that lead them to vote for one candidate over another. You want them brutalized by police. That's psychotic. Now, I actually disagree with the position that she references in this video. Trump has said he wants police officers to have absolute immunity from lawsuits if they do something wrong. I don't agree with that. I don't support that. I think that's a crazy idea. But you can push back on that without wishing brutality onto your fellow Americans. And frankly, that's just probably not even on the radar of most people who voted for Trump. They're worried about the border. They're worried about inflation. They're worried about national security. They're worried about so many things. Niche questions of criminal justice policy probably aren't deciding factors for most voters. And ironically, Trump actually signed some pretty good criminal justice reform legislation, the First Step Act, that freed a lot of people and actually from the black community, you would say was pro criminal justice and all this, but they don't give him credit for that because they just hate him so much. They can never see anything positive about him. And I'm sorry, but like, I, I just can't get over this one point. If you find yourself wishing police brutality on your fellow citizens, you are not the good guy. Like, this isn't hard. That seems so straightforward. Another popular TikTok had a similar message for Latino people who voted for Trump, of which there were many this time around. And I'm gonna just say this, if you were part of that 68% of Latinos that voted for that man, don't look at me, don't talk to me. When we're on the bus getting deported, don't even look in my direction. I do not wanna conversate. Um, I hope every single time you go to the panaderia, you get a stale piece of bread. I hope every single time you get a tres leches cake is drier than your grandma's kneecaps. I hope that you eat a tamal with raw chicken and you get E. coli. I hope that you always have snow in your driveway. I hope your transmission blows up. I hope that when you try to put on a jacket, the zipper breaks. I hope that every single time you put on lotion, you get ashy again. I hope that the eggs comes back I really do hope that all your worst nightmares come true my name is Ricky Jose and I approve this message <laughs> so I at least got to give this guy points for creativity I guess like there were a couple funny lines in there but again I don't know what he's talking about like most Latino people aren't illegal immigrants they're not gonna be deported 
if they're born in America, U.S. citizens, like, what are you talking about? You're not all going to be on the bus together unless you're an undocumented immigrant. In which case, with Trump coming into office, I maybe wouldn't be posting that on the internet. But like, how do they not see this yet? That they're not going to shame and bully people into agreeing with their side, their radical, insane, far left agenda and terrible candidate that they put up is not appealing to people and just calling them race traitors or traitors to their community or fear mongering about U.S. citizens being deported is is not going to do the trick, babe. If, it, if hysteria was going to sway people or bullying was going to get them back in line based on their demographic group. It would have worked a long time ago, but Trump's still here and he's still succeeding politically. So at some point, y'all have to give it a rest and you have to try something different or you're going to keep losing. But all signs are that the woke people, at least the ones on TikTok, are not learning their lesson and are just going to keep insulting people and calling them names and wait for that to work and change people's minds. If you voted for Trump, fuck you. If you voted for Joe Stein, as a vote for Trump. You. If you didn't vote at all and just decided to lie there and take it, fuck you. Well, she seems like a real sweetheart. How do they not get by now that you're not going to insult people into agreeing with you? Will they ever learn or are we going to have Donald Trump Jr. 2028? Now, some people on TikTok are making some reasonable conclusions from the election results. Like that you can no longer trust all white people. <laughs> And white people, I know it's not all of y'all, but I don't trust you. I don't oh. trust any of y'all anymore. And it's on sight. The first white person I see, oh my God. Is is that a threat? And, and babe, it's giving woke KKK. You're out here castigating an entire racial group and you're saying you won't trust people because of their skin color, but you're supposed to be the progressive one, the woke one. Holy crap. Touch grass. The Delulu is off the charts. And it's this kind of woke insanity that pushes so many people, including black people, Hispanic people, gay people, women, all sorts of people to vote for Trump in the first place. Look in the mirror. Another kind soul encouraged people to block and cut off all Trump supporters. This is your friendly reminder to go to Donald Trump's page and see who you have as mutual followers because it's time to unfollow them and take the trash out. Bye. Excuse me? <laughs> this is wild in part because following Trump doesn't mean you're a supporter. I've never supported Trump politically and I've followed him for many years, just like I follow Bernie Sanders and AOC and all sorts of other people. It's called not living in an echo chamber, dear. But the idea that you should just cut off friends and family because they differ from you politically is actually insane and toxic. We should be striving to come together and unify and understand how people could reach such different conclusions than us, not isolate ourselves further into our own echo chambers and tribes, and not ruin perfectly good positive relationships in our lives for something that has really nothing to do or not much to do with our day to day and only tells you a tiny piece about who someone is as a person. It's giving closed minded and unhinged. And this kind of thing is part of why people have backed Trump still because you guys attacked them for it and insulted them and tried to shame them out of it so hard. They're like, no, f you. And look how that worked out for your side, babe. Not well. Some TikTokers even wished natural disasters onto states that voted for Trump. Yes, seriously. And to you bitches in Florida, y'all bet not ever ask for another mother prayer. I can't wait till that bitch float off the mother US. That's why y'all be having the shit that y'all got now. Y'all deserve it. Um, so my dear, this is actually insane. The best time to delete this video would have been immediately after posting it. The second best time would be right now. You really just suggested that the state of Florida, by the way, which almost half of which, like 40, 45% of which voted for Harris anyway, deserves devastation, death, destruction, and natural disasters because they disagree with you politically. You really have that energy for kids who die in these disasters or whose schools are destroyed or homes are ruined? Like you're sick in the head, babe. And even having that energy for the people who do support Trump, even adults who just think differently than you is evil. It's actually evil to wish death and devastation onto people because they disagree with you. When you're on the side 
of the natural disasters and against the people who are having their homes destroyed and losing their lives, you're not the good guy. I don't know how to explain this to people. It seems like it should be obvious, self-evident. It's basic morality. And again, like, do you think this is going to change minds? Do you think this is going to, this has over 2.3 million views on TikTok. You think this is going to win people over? How's this kind of messaging been working out? for your side. But of course, some of them really can't understand what happened last night, at least not at any deeper level than America just hates all marginalized people. That's literally what some of them sound like. It's just so awesome <laughs> how much this country hates women. <laughs> it's so awesome. It's really awesome. Like, how awesome would it be to live in a country that, like, doesn't hate women? That'd be so cool, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, but if you think the electoral divide in our country boils down to people who hate women and people who don't hate women, when all these complicated issues affect people's lives and divide us politically, you're actually a simpleton. If you think that all the women who voted for Trump and all the men who love those women just hate women. That's the only explanation for their behavior. You are an intellectual toddler. You just lack the capacity to understand any degree of nuance. Like in some ways, I do think it's fair to really question Trump's record with women and the things he said, the things he's been accused of. But people support him in spite of that, not because of it. And if anything, it should prompt some soul searching, some reflection that your side and what it's offering Americans is so unappealing that they're going with that guy over you in huge amounts, including women, many women, including many minorities, including many gay people. Like maybe, just maybe, the problem is you as well. Not just that half the world is evil and hateful and just the terrible, meanest, baddest bullies people. Give me a break. The one common trend I'm just seeing in all these insane TikTok meltdowns and reactions to the election is zero accountability or self-reflection of any kind. So there are so many more of these videos and they're just being posted like crazy, but I'm going to leave it there in terms of content to react to today. I might have to do more tomorrow. Honestly, I don't know if they just keep coming, but I just have a couple thoughts about this election and about this online discourse over it that I want to leave you with. Number one, I said this before the election, no matter who won, our country is going to be okay. America is a strong, beautiful country with strong institutions that will hold if Trump tries some crazy shit and if Kamala did some of the terrible things she had planned. Either way, the sun will rise again. We will have another election. There will not be dystopian death camps for any minority group of people. Everyone needs to take a deep breath and exhale and go outside and touch some grass. And two, just a note to my Republican and conservative friends who didn't like when I pointed out that the 2020 election was not stolen and was actually almost entirely legit and almost all of the complaints turned out to be bullshit from Trump and his supporters. Well, that same electoral system with very minimal changes has now delivered a emphatic win for Trump. So clearly it's not rigged. <laughs> clearly all the conspiracies and all the stuff y'all were on about wasn't actually true. So please give it a rest and don't pull that stuff with me ever again. And finally, to liberals and progressives who are losing their minds over this result, I get being unhappy that your side lost. I really do. This is how independents like me feel basically every election, by the way. But you need to look in the mirror. Your side has gone crazy. You've sprinted to the far left on economics, make turning Bernie Sanders from one of the radicals in your party to the new center of gravity when it comes to policies. You exploded the federal budget, spent trillions of dollars we didn't have on wasteful and ineffective stimulus that in fueled inflation. You presided over a border crisis. You botched the Afghanistan withdrawal. And you did all sorts of insane woke shit 
that normal people aren't on board with and made that your party's image. As a result, Americans across the spectrum, women, Hispanics, black people, gay people, all of them are turning away from you in record numbers. At some point you have to admit, the problem is you, at least part of it. It's not all that everybody's evil, racist, sexist, homophobic, whatever, anti-LGBTQI2 play us, Wi-Fi password fucking community. At some point, it's you. Look in the mirror. What you're offering America isn't compelling or good. <laughs> Reign in your side and offer Americans a saner and more normal alternative. But don't do what so many online progressives are already doing and double down on the insanity while just doubling down on the approach of insulting, degrading, and dismissing everyone who dares disagree with your infinite wisdom. Or we will have Trump and Trump 2.0 for the rest of our lives. That could well mean Donald Trump Jr. in 2028, if you guys don't cut this shit out. All right, guys, that's it for this episode, this special episode of the Brad vs. Everyone podcast. We will be back to our normal scheduled programming tomorrow. Do hit that like button before you go and make sure you're subscribed. Do comment with your thoughts. I do read the comments and I pick a few to respond to in every episode. I'm skipping that for this episode, but I'll respond to them all tomorrow. If you leave your comment with a super chat or a super thanks, I'll definitely respond to it on this show. And with that, TikTokers, take a chill pill and we'll talk again tomorrow. Uh,